Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Victor Avalar and this is 10 Minute Insights, a series of short videos on everything data centers. And today we're going to talk about what is a data center. It's odd that I started with some very deep technical type of content and uh, all along there's some very basic questions. And uh, one of the comments we got back was, hey, why don't you just tell people what a data center is? So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, before we start, again, I encourage you to leave us a like, uh, comment, feedback, and especially any questions you want uh, answered on this series. So let's get started. I wanted to kind of paint a picture of what are the main uh, components of uh, data center infrastructure. First, you have building type infrastructure. We're talking about chillers, air economizers. Uh, the pumps for your chilled water plant, also the heat. Sometimes it's called heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, or HVAC. Okay, so you got your building portion. And then you have your power, things like UPS, your generators, your switch gear, busway, the things that carry the power from the main uh, power units like, you know, your UPS down to your IT equipment. And then you finally get to the IT space, and the IT space is IT racks, IT pods, you have your computer room, air conditioning units, air containment, PDUs, panels, breakers, you know, the physical security. These are the types of things that you'd find in the IT space. So now I'd like to categorize data centers in a different way. And this is just so you're aware of some of the common language that is um, going around in the industry right now. As you can see here, there are three basic categories of data centers. You have centralized cloud, you have regional edge, and then local edge. And I'll describe each of these. Let's start with centralized cloud. Um, you know, data centers are all about getting the information that you need, compute, storage, what have you. And if you think about how you, for example, you perform a search on a search engine, you are getting those search results from a centralized cloud data center. Uh, these are typically very, very large data centers. We're talking tens uh, of megawatts, sometimes even hundreds of megawatts. And I'll show you later on some, example, some examples of what these data centers look like. But for now, just know that those centralized clouds, sometimes called hyperscale data centers, are responsible for serving up search results uh, online storage, um, different types of services that you would get, such as email, that type of thing. And then you have regional edge. These are smaller data centers, uh, certainly smaller than the hyperscale data centers. Uh, so these are anywhere in the range of a couple of hundred kilowatts to maybe uh, a megawatt, maybe even uh, two megawatts. Uh, but nothing, you know, much, much larger than that in general. Uh, so they're relatively smaller data centers. And these data centers tend to be used by enterprise companies um, that uh, have that which sometimes called on-premise data centers. And they serve up some specific applications that the company depends on. And, you know, these are known as regional edge because they are... Uh, not exactly on the edge of where every single employee is, like in office spaces, but it is on edge relative to their company. And they might have several of these regional edge data centers throughout the major hubs of their company. Um, and so, and I'll show you some examples of, of these types of data centers later on. And then finally, we have the local edge. So for anyone who has uh, streamed videos, for example, you are likely using a local edge data center. And these data centers live, like I said, close to the point of use. Um, why? Well, when you're streaming a video, the last thing you want is buffering. You don't want that, that circle constantly going around, waiting for more zeros and ones to get to your TV. You want to see a seamless movie. You know, you want a pleasant experience watching that movie. So local edge is one of the solution, solutions to bringing you that positive experience when you stream a video. That's just one application where you would use a local edge. And these local edge data centers 
they, they may not be you know, just one rack. They may be several racks. Um, but the point is that they are uh, situated much closer to the point of use than you would have a regional edge, and certainly much closer than you would have a centralized cloud. Um, the other reason that you'd want to put applications like this close to the point of use is to uh, reduce the cost of bandwidth. So it's latency and reduce the cost of bandwidth. Uh, some of these edge data centers sometimes called micro data centers, where it literally is one rack of IT equipment with power and cooling all, in, all encompassed in one solution, and it's placed perhaps at a retail location, or it might be at a, uh, a, a remote office with maybe 10 or 20 people. So these are just examples of local edge data centers, and, uh, and, and again, I'm going to give you some examples of this later on when I show you some pictures of data centers. So I thought, hey, if people have a question on what a data center is, I thought we should really go through um, inside and out what a data center looks like. So what we have here is a uh, rather large data center campus. This happens to be a Facebook data center. Uh, by the way, publicly available on the website, I left the URL here below. And the, the first thing you notice is that it's, it's a sprawling campus. It's a big facility. And these uh, data centers uh, are what is known as internet giant data centers or hyperscale data centers. Uh, you know, companies like Google and Apple and Amazon have these large sprawling data centers. And, uh, you know, they, they could be a million square feet or more. We're talking a 20 plus regulation size soccer field. So just to kind of give you an idea of how big these things are. And in terms of power, you could be talking about uh, 10 megawatts, 20 megawatts, maybe even 100 megawatts on a big campus. Uh, and so these, these are, you know, when you think cloud data centers, this is what should come to mind. So now I wanted to show you uh, a, a bit different uh, data center here. Um, this is known as the Yahoo Chicken Coop data center. You may have heard of it. And it's pretty unique in that it's shaped like a chicken coop. Um, you'll notice here this uh, high level structure here. That's where the hot ear goes through. It's known as the cupola. That hot ear uh, from the exhaust of the servers comes out through here. So the way it works is cool uh, ear comes in through the sides of the data center, goes through the servers, and after it leaves the servers, of course, it's, it's warm, it's hotter ear, and then naturally that hot ear wants to rise up, and then it goes through the cupolas and out of those vents at the top. So um, an interesting way of, of cooling data center, uh, cooling servers, and uh, you know, it's, it's uh, efficient, and uh, relatively low cost to build one of these structures, but obviously it has to be built in the, in the right uh, climate. So now I want to step inside a data center, and I want to show you what you would typically see in pretty much any uh, data center that you step into. So here we have these uh, black cabinets are PDUs, or power distribution units. These are basically the uh, cabinets that hold the circuit breakers that feed the circuits that feed the IT servers and IT equipment. Overhead, you'll see some uh, raceways, some wire trays. These are basically uh, carrying the internet cabling and power cabling um, to, the, uh, to the different IT equipment. <clears throat> These are the, a few examples of IT racks <coughs> Excuse me, here. You'll notice that there's two doors here, and there's a hard floor. So if there's a hard floor and you see doors, chances are this is a hot aisle contained pod. In other words, all of this area here is cold air, and, it's, and the servers are sucking in that cold air, warming up that air, and it's getting um, consolidated in this area. It's getting contained in that area, and if you look here, you'll see some partitioning that means that hot air is going up into the drop ceiling plenum. Uh, we call it a plenum. Anytime you have a void above the ceiling or below the floor, it's called a plenum. And so that hot air 
must be going back to some kind of cooling system. And if you remember from video number one, we talked about how containment can improve the efficiency of uh, data center cooling systems. So anyway, this is a, an example of what you'd see inside a data center. Let's take a look at another uh, data center. Here it's a, it's a little bit bigger, but right away you'll notice these tiles. These are two foot by two foot tiles, and this is, got, this is a raised floor data center. And so how do you get cold air underneath that raised floor plenum? Well, if you look here, you'll see these blue things. These are the computer room air handlers or air conditioners. And they're blowing. Their job is to blow cold air into the bottom of the raised floor, beneath the raised floor. And then you'll see here these tiles. These tiles uh, have small holes in them, and they are, they're allowing that cold air to come up in front of the servers. All right, so... Uh, these are the cooling units. You'll also notice that they're ducted to the drop ceiling plenum. That means that there's hot air, uh, you know, gathering up in that hot air plenum and then coming back down. So somewhere in this set setup, there's got to be some kind of hot aisle containment or at least some, some vents that are allowing that hot air to make their way up to the um, drop ceiling. And then we have sort of a showpiece data center. They have this glass wall, this glass room. Uh, for uh, physical security, you'll notice how there's doors again here at the end of the aisles. This indicates that there's some kind of containment, most likely hot air, hot aisle containment. Here I can see that there's an in-road type cooling unit um, and some chilled water piping above. So this is a chilled water cooling system. Here's a very basic type of data center. Uh, we're talking about three IT racks looks to be in a typical office environment, uh, small business. Um, and again, you might call this a data room, but to them, this is their lifeblood of their business. This is their data center. Here's another smaller data center, uh, which is typical of a, of a small or medium business. Um, a lot of times you'll see different types of IT equipment. Uh, you might even see some old mainframes like AS400s that are running a critical piece of the business and uh, they can't afford to uh, replace that piece of equipment. So that's what you'll see in, in uh, data centers like this. Also notice the chairs and desks, probably a place where IT admins uh, normally sit. Here we'll see what looks to be like a wiring closet, but in fact this could be someone's data center, small business, right? Uh, here we have a piece of what looks to be office uh, furniture, but it really is an IT rack. And inside that IT rack, you have um, uh, sound attenuation and cooling fans to uh, keep that equipment cool. So this is something interesting. This is a data center on wheels. Comes complete with its own generator. Uh, roughly 13, 12, 13 IT racks. A network operations center here. And also its own IT connectivity via this uh, satellite dish that comes out from the cowl of the tractor. This is, an actually, this is actually a real data center that was sold to a, a hospital some years ago. Well, that's all I have for you today. Uh, hopefully this was educational for you. Again, I can't stress enough. If you have any questions, any at all, that are top of mind, please let us know. Uh, leave us a comment with that question, and we would love to put something together for you and for others like you that have the same question. So thanks again for uh, tuning in, and we'll see you next time.